Hi Booktubers, Nikki here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to bring you my August TBR. But first of all, I'm just going to show you, I don't know if you can see my new t-shirt here. Um, I got it on my recent trip to England, England 2023, of course, supporting the ladies and the England lionesses in the World Cup. So enjoying the matches so far as I film. We've won our first two matches. So yeah, really, really excited to carry on watching um, the tournament. So yeah, thought I would show my England football allegiance today. So let's kick off first of all with my buddy reads for the month and the first one is The Lincoln Highway by Amor Towns and I'm going to be buddy reading this with the lovely Sue Jackson and I'll link her channel down below and she runs Big Book Summer and this is big. This is I think 576 pages <laughs> so it's a beast but I've heard really really good things about this. I enjoyed A Gentleman in Moscow. Now I know that that's been, you know, has a bit of a Marmite reaction to it. People either really enjoy it um, or they just can't get into it at all. It is quite slow and I listened to that one on audiobook but I think the buddy reading experience for this one will really, really um, help me to get absorbed into it. And we're in 1950s America and we are following a guy called Emmett Watson and he's just served 15 months for involuntary manslaughter and he has been working on this juvenile work farm. And basically the warden from that farm is driving him towards Nebraska, deposits him there. He thinks he's going to make a trip to California, but out of the boot of the car or the trunk of the car, as the Americans say, um, come two of his friends who've been at that work farm and they are going to change the course, his fate, by heading him towards New York as opposed to California. Um, fascinatingly, I think the whole book only spans 10 days and um, excitingly, it's told from multiple perspectives. So yeah, I'm very, very keen to get started and get absorbed into this world. Now my second buddy read is with the lovely Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures and we're going to be reading together Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This is another one set in the 1950s but this time we are heading over to Paris and we are following a, an American guy there who is really trying to establish himself and he's wrestling with his sexual identity and he's trying to work out what is a conventional life um, in that city in that time period and I think we're going to see him really um, struggle with that internally and what's expected from him within the society at that time and it's also about the mystery of love. So this is of course is a modern classic, it will be my first James Baldwin, I think it is also Berners at first James Baldwin as well but I've heard really good things about this one as well. I know it featured in some people's best of the year, um, I think the year before last actually. So yeah, very excited. Always enjoy my buddy reading experience with Berner. So yeah, really looking forward to this one as well. Now the next book I'm going to talk about is my subscriber choice. So this is the book that you the subscribers choose for me for the month. Now as it stands, <laughs> the voting, I'm filming on Sunday the 30th of July because I'm about to go away tomorrow to the island of Borneo for five days trip. So very excited about that. Um, but I don't know the winner yet as I film because it is neck and neck between two of the books. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the voting open until I come back on Friday night and then I will see if there's any change. And the two which are neck and neck at the moment is one, Scrublands by Chris Hammer. And this is a new crime novel, um, crime series set in Australia. And the other one is Tidelands by Philippa Gregory. And this is historical fiction, of course, Philippa Gregory. And it's set in the 17th century following a young girl called Eleanor, Eleanor who is accused of witchcraft because she has a certain skill in herbs. So yeah, I is it going to be crime? Is it going to be historical fiction? So I will have to let you know that one in my first wrap up for August, August part one later in a couple of weeks time. Now the next two um, are for my book group here in Singapore. We're not actually meeting till the 28th of August and if you watch my July TBI you would have seen them in that video because unfortunately I've not been able to get to them <laughs> in July. So they're going to roll over into August and the first one is The Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel. This is historical fiction in World War II and we're following Eva who forges the 
papers of children in order to get them to escape from France in a dangerous time to Switzerland, which of course was neutral at that time. And in order that these children will not be lost from memory, she records their names in a book. And I suspect that this book then is found in the future. And so we remember then all the names of those children and they have their identity. So yeah, I've heard really good things about this and Kristen Harmel, so I'm very keen. So I think this will be read very early on in the month of August. And the second one is From Scratch by Tembi Locke. And this is a memoir. And this is about a black American woman who falls in love with a Sicilian guy and um, he's from a very traditional Sicilian family. So I think we're gonna have a very cross-cultural relationship here. He, I think towards the beginning of the book, he unfortunately passes away and in her grief and dealing with this, she returns for two or three summers to beautiful Sicily and um, has a healing um, process by plugging herself into the local community, the Sicilian family and um, the beautiful countryside and the food. So yeah, and of course this has also been made into a Netflix adaptation as well. So I'm looking forward to watching that after reading the book as well. I don't think it's that long, so I really need to get on with that one and read that one quite quickly. Now, of course, August is Women in Translation Month. And a thank you to booktuber Charlotte Malloy, who reminded me of this recently. And I'm going to link Charlotte's channel down below, a fantastic channel. She's a British um, woman who's living in Bali. So go over and check her channel, it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm gonna also link below her Women in Translation recommendations videos, which she's got some great ideas. Now in her video, she mentions Isabel Allende, who's one of my favorite authors. And she talks about the book, The House of the Spirits, which is one of her most famous books and really high ratings on Goodreads. I've read the first two in that series, Daughter of Fortune and Portrait in Sepia. I really enjoyed both of those books and they are set in Chile. And this one is about a girl called Clara. And when she's a young girl, it's quite clear that she has a special power to be able to predict in the future. But when her really close sister, Rosa, um, mysteriously dies, Clara becomes mute and this becomes, um, she's mute for about nine years. But when she finally breaks her silence and starts to speak, she declares that she is going to be marrying a guy called Esteban, Esteban Trueba, who is a really sort of volatile, fiery landowner. So um, yeah, this is basically going to be another one set in Latin America, and it's going to cover multiple generations, I believe, and usually very strong characters and family, secrets, love, everything that I love about Isabel Lion Day's um, writing, I get really pulled into her characters usually. So yeah, really hoping I can't, I can get to that one. If I can't, I might be able to source another audio book, another Isabel Allende. So we will see. Now the next book I want to tackle in August is The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. Now this is, um, this copy belongs to one of my young colleagues and we were studying with our year sixes at school, Indigenous people. And we got talking about, we want to read more authors who are Indigenous authors. And my young colleague said, I've read this book and I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to lend it to you. And of course, Louise Erdrich is an Indigenous author. Now, I don't think this book probably needs much introduction because last year it had lots of hype because it made the shortlist of the Women's Prize. I've heard lots of booktubers talk about it and I know that it's had a mixed response. But my young colleague said that she struggled at first to get into it and then she really enjoyed it after that. So I'm determined to give it a go. So it appears that this is a ghost story and starts on All Souls Day in 2019. And because that is because Flora dies on that day and we then follow her, it seems, for the next year, and she will not leave this independent bookshop. Her ghost seems to be continuously present. And we then turn to another character called Tuki, who um, works within this bookshop and makes it her task to try and solve this mystery, the haunting of this bookshop. So yeah, premise sounds really fascinating. So I'm really hoping that um, I can get really into it Though I've got the physical book, I've also downloaded the audio book. So I'm actually tempted to do both at the same time. And then I may switch to audio book if I can get really into it and into the characters. But yeah, looking forward to trying this one and trying my first Louise Erdrich, I should say, as well. 
Now, as I was making this TBR, I realised that all those seven books are either physical or um, on Kindle. So I definitely need to balance this up with um, some audio books as well. And I heard a booktuber talking about Anne Tyler and I thought, I haven't read Anne Tyler for ages. So I just feel kind of feel it in the mood. And I am going to listen to A Spool of Blue Thread by Anne Tyler. Now, I'm very aware that this is a very quiet novel, I think, but I think I might be in the mood for it. And this is all about, in typical Anne Tyler style, about family life and and generations of it and in particular we are following Abby and her husband Red and they are sitting on the porch front porch of their lovely house with um, their adult children and their grandchildren and Abby st starts to talk about 1959 so another book um, back to the 50s when Abby and Red fell in love and so I think the children and grandchildren have heard the story many times before but then we're going to hear more about other stories and we're going to focus on the concerns that Abby and Red are getting older and how they should be looked after going forward and what's going to happen to the beloved house that they're all sitting at at that time so yeah it sounds like classic and Tyler generations stories connected to the family so yeah I'm going to give that one a try now the next one is going to surprise you because it's YA fantasy who am I? <laughs> but I thought I just again I just wanted something a little bit different. So I'm I'm going to be listening to I've already got I've got the physical book, but I know that I can source the audio through my library, and I'm going to be listening to Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Now this is all about um, the Reds and the Silvers. Now the Reds are the commoners, and the Silver are the elite in this world. And the main character in this is um, Mare Barrow. And and she is a 17 year old Red who lives in poverty and she finds herself though going to work in the Silver Palace and discovers that she has an unusual power and furtively she is going to help the Red Guard to fight against, fight against the Silvers and bring down the Silver regime which is in power. So yeah, completely out of my usual... Um, <laughs> my usual genre and my usual world of reading but yeah power is a dangerous game so yeah I just I hope it's going to be quick and fun and I just just in the mood for something a little bit different as well so yeah that's Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard now my 10th and final book is one I blame on the TV because I watched the TV series and I loved it and I so therefore I know how the story goes but I really want to read the book and that is The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. And this is the first in the Susan Ryland series. Susan Ryland is played by the wonderful Leslie Manville which those of you who love The Crown will, will know that she's um, the latest um, uh, Princess Margaret in the Crown series and has been in multiple things. She's a fantastic British actress. Um, this is such a good um, crime series and in fact it's like a novel within a novel that Horowitz has created here. Um, Susan Ryland is an editor and she has worked for many years for a crime writer, Alan Conway. Alan Conway writes Agatha Christie type esque novels and Atticus Pund is a German guy who is like his main protagonist and he assists the police in their murder inquiries and set I think again in the 1950s I seem to be having a 1950s theme going on here um you know which I didn't um didn't plan for but there we go and but basically what happens is so we get the crime stories which are going on in Atticus Pun's world but then Alan Conway the crime writer himself is found dead and Susan Ryland believes that he's been murdered and so she sort of then takes on although she's the editor she then takes on the role of like an amateur sleuth and she decides that Alan Conway has been murdered and she believes that the clue to his murderer is found in one of these Atticus Pund um, novels. So there we go, there's my August TBR. Very excited to get started in the coming few days. I would love to hear from you. Have you read any of these books and what did you think of them? Or have you seen the TV series as well? Have you seen Magpie Murders as well? I'd love to hear that too. And what's the book that you're most excited for to read in the month of August? Thank you so much for watching today. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from my channel and I'll be coming to you with another video very soon. Take care, bye.